This is section 8-1, day 2, and like I've said before that uh, we're not going to use the equipment to do the test. And this is, this is, instead of using the equipment, this is how we're going to do this, to add vectors together. We're going to start out with 2A plus B. Here's A, so we need two of these. And 1, we go up 2 and right 1. So let's go, uh, how about we start here? Let's start right here. Up 2 and right 1. And then we do one more, up two and right one. And I'm going to use, I'm going to cheat a little bit, use the tool here. There we go. Put a little arrow on the end of that. And then uh, plus B. So I just need one of these Bs. So down two and right one, two, three. Down two and right one, two, three. Right here. That should be nice and straight. And then we draw the resulting vector. So there's the result. Let's talk about subtracting. Let's go with A, up 2 and over 1. So how about uh, up 2? I don't want to draw that. I just want to count. So let's start here and go up 2 and over 1. So there's A, and then minus B means we're just going to go in the opposite direction. So instead of down 2 and right 3, we're going to go up 2 and left 1, 2, 3 right here. And then there is the resulting vector right there. There's the result. Two or more vectors with a sum that is a vector R are called components of R. While components can have any direction, it is often useful to express or resolve a vector into two perpendicular components. The rectangular components of a vector are horizontal and vertical. In the diagram, the force R exerted to pull the wagon can be thought of as the sum of a horizontal component force X that moves the wagon forward and a vertical component force Y that pulls the wagon upward. Now, it, this is section 8.1, and normally we'd be using uh, the equipment to do this, but we're going to uh, use unit circle measurements rather than actually using all the equipment. So I'm going to get my calculator out. There we go, and I need to widen this. Let's clear that. Let's make sure we're in degrees. We are in degrees. Heather is pushing the handle of a lawnmower with a force of 450 newtons at an angle of 56 degrees of the ground. Draw a diagram that shows the resolution of the force that Heather exerts into its rectangular component. So rather than draw the diagram, we're just going to find the X component and we're going to find the Y component. Uh, so we simply do 450 cosine of 56 degrees and 450 sine of 56 degrees. So let's go four, 450 cosine of 56 and 450 sine of 56. And so the force acting um, horizontally is 251.637 rounded, and vertically is 373.067. And uh, that's going to be newtons, so we'll put an N on these newtons. Use vectors to solve navigation problems. An airplane is flying with an airspeed of 310 knots on a heading of 50 degrees, or 050. If a 78 knot wind is blowing from a true heading of 125, determine the speed and direction of the plane relative to the ground. So we're flying at 050. That's something like this. And then uh, 125 is that. So let's start down here. And 50 degrees from north, let's say, is like that. So this is actually... 50 degrees right there. Then the wind is blowing. It's blowing from, that's an important word right there, from a true heading of 125. So 125 would be down here somewhere where this, this would be 90 and then another 35 degrees. But the wind is actually blowing this way like that. Uh, so here's 310, 
This is uh, 78 knots. We have to get unit circle measurements. So this right here is 40 degrees. So the plane, let's get the component form of the plane. And that's going to be 310 cosine of 40 and 310 sine of 40. The wind is, let's see, if this right here, if this is 35, this must be 35. So the unit circle measurement for this vector is uh, 145 because we need 180. That total would be 180. So the component form of the wind is 78 cosine of 145 and 78 sine of 145. Now we want to know the resulting vector, the resulting path of the plane. So this right here, this is the resulting vector. So we want the component form of that vector right there. So let's take 310 cosine of 40. And we notice that is a positive. So we're actually doing, let's see, we're doing the component form of the plane right there. So we have that positive, and then we want to add on or subtract off the component form of the wind. So that should be negative. So we're going to add on 78 uh, cosine. Cosine of 145. And notice it reduced in value. So that 78 cosine of 145 must have been negative. So the result is 173.5. 580, but we're going to put that into A. So we're going to go store, store in alpha A. So that value stored. Now let's do the Y's. Let's do the Y's. We have 310 sine of 40 and plus 78 sine of 145. And that's 244. So 244.003. Let's put that into B. So store alpha B. Well, we want, uh, we want the magnitude. So how fast is the plane going? And that's going to be the magnitude of the result is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Magnitude is just simply the Pythagorean theorem. So we want the square root of A squared plus B squared. And so the speed of the plane is 299.445, and that's knots. Now we know that the angle that we're looking for is inverse tangent of B over A. So we want inverse tangent of B divided by A. So that's equal to 54.573 degrees, but everything is in, uh, you know, head bearings. So if we have 54, if this is 54, then we actually want this right there, which we take 90 minus the answer, and it's actually 035. So 035 degrees. So here's our, one of our answers right there, and here's the other answer. Mitchell swims due east at a speed of 3.5 feet per second across a river directly toward the opposite bank. At the same time, the current of the river is carrying him due south at a rate of 2 feet per second. Find Mitchell's speed and direction relative to the shore. So there's one of the shores. Here's the other one. And Mitchell is swimming... Which swims due east at a speed of 3.5. So that's 3.5. And then the river is going to carry him downstream like that. So this is going to be the path. And this is 2 feet per second. Find Mitchell's speed and direction. Uh, so let's do um, the speed. 
is the square root of 3.5 squared plus 2 squared. So square root 3.5 squared well, plus 4. I know what 2 squared is. Uh, so the speed is 4.031, and that's uh, feet per second. And then we need we need this angle right here. Uh, so the inverse tangent of uh, 2 over 3.5, opposite over adjacent. So inverse tangent of uh, 2 divided by... 3.5 and we should probably we could probably do this we could probably think of this as negative where it's going down negative 2 so if we insert a negative that probably makes more sense and so this is at uh, negative 29.745 degrees let me clear this and go through it an airplane is flying with an airspeed of 310 knots on a heading of 130 degrees. If a 40 knot wind is blowing at a true at a true heading of 25 degrees, determine the speed and direction of the plane relative to the ground. So we're going to go 130 and then we're going to go 25. So maybe we start up here. So here's the plane like that. And we're calling this right here, we're calling that uh, 130. We're going to need to get the, the unit circle measurement for that. And then uh, a 40, uh, 25 degrees. So this is the 25 degrees up here. So this right there, there's the 25. And we want the resulting vector. So how about the plane? Plane that's 310 knots. This is 40 knots. So the plane is 310 cosine of, all right, we need the unit circle. If that's 130, then uh, this, this piece right here, that's a little, it's a little big. There we go. Let's save that as a little smaller. That little piece is um, 40, right? So we're 40 degrees short at 360. That's going to be 320. So if we go all the way around to this, that's 320. And then 310 sine of 320. The wind is 40 cosine of... Well, if that's 25, we actually want the unit circle measurement. That should be 65, cosine of 65. So 40 sine of 65. And we want the result. The resulting vector is going to be 40 cosine of 65. And, oh, no, actually, we want uh, 310. 310 cosine of 320. It wouldn't have really mattered. Uh, plus 40 cosine of 65. And so the first part, the X component is 254.379 rounded. And we're going to store that in A. And then we have 310 sine of 320. And we're going to add that to 40 sine of 65 and we get negative 163.012 and notice that if we extended this x-axis out here the x is positive and the y is negative for the resulting vector for the result <clears throat> excuse me well let's store that into b so store into B. What happened here? Quit. Clear. Store into B. So this is A. This is B. The magnitude of R is the square root of A squared plus B squared. So we want square root of A squared plus B squared. 
So that's 302.128, and that's knots. And uh, the direction, we want the angle. So we want the inverse tangent of B over A. Let's go inverse tangent of B divided by A. And we get negative 32.653, but we want, let's see, that's down this way like that. And we want to, we want the bearing. So we're going to add 90 to that value, but as a positive. Uh, so if we multiply this by negative one, it's going to get a positive and then add 90 to that. And that'll be a bearing measurement. So the answer we're looking for is 122.65. Actually, we just do it as 122 degrees. I would take 123 if you want to round. All right, let's clear this and, and go through it. You and your friend are using ropes to pull a heavy object. Use the diagram to determine the path of the object and what force is applied to the object. Well, if you're both pulling on it, that's two vectors. And if you want to know the overall force, uh, what is the path of and what force, path and force, we add the two vectors together. So we're going to take this bottom vector and we're going to apply it. We're going to add it up here, add it something like that. And so this is going to be the resulting path and the resulting force. So our first vector, we need the component form of the first vector. And that is going to be uh, 30 cosine of 35 and 30 sine of 35. There's the first one. And we'll add on the second one. And that's 20 cosine of, well, if this is 10 degrees, then we really want 350. We want all the way around like that. We always want the unit circle measurement because our calculator only knows unit circle measurements. And then we have 20 sine of 350. So let's get that 30 cosine of 35. And we're going to add 20 cosine of 350. So the path is going to be 44.271 degrees. Oh, no, that's... So the X component of the result is 44.271. I was thinking degrees. That's not it. That's It's the component. I don't know why I said degrees. You can ignore that. I did think about it a little bit. Um, and then we go 30 sine of 35 plus 20 sine of 350. And the component form of that is 13.734. I should put these in let's uh can i just store this Let, let's get this answer i can get that answer store in a we can go up here get this answer and store this in b so we have a and b so the magnitude of the resulting or the magnitude of the force or the force itself is uh Pythagorean theorem. So square root of a squared plus b squared. So square root of a squared plus b squared. So the force is 46.352, and I'm sure it's Newton's again. And then uh, the angle is the inverse tangent of b over a. So inverse tangent of B divided by A. And so we're looking at 17.236 degrees. I thought we could do a quick review of 8.2. Find the component form and magnitude of AB with the given initial and terminal points. Uh, so we have a 3 minus negative 2, negative 1 minus 5, you know, x2 minus x1. 
y2 minus y1, so that's 5, negative 6, and then the magnitude is the square root of 25 plus 36, square root of uh, 61 is the magnitude. Find each of the following, uh, f, so 8, 0, minus 2 times g, negative 3, negative 5. So we have 8, 0, and we're going to subtract negative 6, negative 10. So 8 minus a negative 6 is 14, and 0 minus negative 10 is 10. Find a unit vector u with the same direction as v. We're going to divide by the magnitude. So the magnitude is the square root of 4 plus 25. That's square root of 29. So the answer we're looking for is negative 2 over square root of 29 and 5 over square root of 29. Now if you look at, at the solutions, uh, I think the book is rationalizing the denominator. I don't really require that. Let DE be the vector with the given initial and terminal points. Write D as a linear combination of vectors I and J. Uh, so we have negative 2 minus 3 and 6 minus negative 4. So that's going to be 5i plus 10j. Find the component form of v with the given magnitude and direction angle. We need 5 cosine of 25 and 5 sine of 25. Well, we don't know anything about 25, so this is a calculator problem. 5 cosine of 25. So 4.532 rounded and 5 sine of 25. And that's going to be uh, 2.113. Find the component form. Got that. Find the direction angle of each vector to the nearest tenth of a degree. Now we have to be aware of principal quadrants. Now 3, 5, that's in quadrant 1. So this should be just be very straightforward. Inverse tangent of 5 over 3. Inverse tangent of 5 divided by 3. That's 59.036 degrees. That one I don't need to adjust. That's in a principal quadrant. But negative 2, 8 up here, this is not in a principal quadrant. So when we do inverse tangent of negative 8 over 2, we're going to have to make some adjustments. So inverse tangent of negative 4 is... Uh, that's, you know, negative 75.964 degrees. That's actually over here, negative 75. So we want to add 180 to this. Add 180. The answer we're looking for is 104.036 degrees.